Hey there people, it's Dan Phoenix here. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about why I have actually quit calisthenics after doing calisthenics for about three years. And if you're someone that is new to my YouTube channel, if you don't know already, around three years ago, I embarked on a year transformation with calisthenics. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link for up above. It's the biggest viewed video on this channel, has almost six million views. And I managed to go from skinny fat, as you can see here, to having quite a lot of muscle and being quite lean and ripped. So I actually gained around 10 kilos of muscle within a, a year. And yes, I did absolutely love calisthenics, but I ended up quitting about three months ago due to various different reasons. And I need to give you a bit of a backstory first. So late of last year, in November, my health for three months got absolutely destroyed due to being on the vegan diet. If you wanna know all the ins and outs about that and why I quit being vegan after six years, click the link for the video up above and I talk about that in more detail. And I actually couldn't train for three months because my energy levels were completely destroyed. And then once I actually started to regain my health where I had a lot of energy levels, which I still have to this current point with where I'm at now, I just started doing a bit of calisthenics here and there, and I had to just do small amounts of it because I was still fully recovering from the damage that was inducing me on a vegan diet. And yeah, I just, three months ago, just felt a natural desire to stop calisthenics completely and do bodybuilding due to a variety of different reasons. So first off, I want to maximize muscle growth, which I did manage to grow a lot of muscle whilst I was doing calisthenics, but I found that I could never surpass 70 kilograms in total. No matter how hard I was training, no matter how much food I was taking, no matter how many things that I did naturally to optimize my hormone production and just recovering as much as possible, I just could not surpass that weight. So that's one of the reasons why I quit, is because I wanted to gain more weight and get heavier, which I've managed to do. I'm actually at 73 kilos. And when I actually got my health destroyed on the vegan diet, I actually ended up going from 70 kilos down to 60 kilos. And what I'm gonna do is show a photo comparison. This is what I looked like before I started the year transformation. And this is what I looked like at the same weight once my health got destroyed on a vegan diet. So it's interesting to see on the left, I am skinny fat. On the right, I'm very lean and ripped. But as you can see, I've got nowhere near as much muscle mass as I did when I got to the end of my one year calisthenics transformation. I definitely look malnourished and quite depleted. So that's just an important side note that I thought you would like to know about. But one of the main reasons why I gave up was I started to do yoga consistently. My girlfriend is an Ashtanga yoga teacher. She's been doing yoga for 20 years and she's taught so many people. She's done retreats and workshops all around the world. She is really, really good teacher with yoga. And once I started to do yoga, I started to become aware, once I started to get back into calisthenics after my health started to go back up, is that I found with the calisthenics that it was just really taxing on my CNS, which is a central nervous system. I just found it very, very stimulating whilst I was doing it. And it just felt like I was doing more of a cardio workout. Yes, it was working on my muscles at the same time and increasing strength and helping build my muscle mass back up. But I just found that it was just giving me way more on my central nervous system and not as much growth with my muscle mass. So I was like, okay, I'm trying to get back into the calisthenics. It doesn't feel right to me anymore. It just feels that it's just too taxing on my body and it's not necessarily giving me the results that I wanted because when I got into calisthenics and with my whole calisthenics journey for the three years, yes, I did wanna learn certain skills, which I learned certain things such as muscle ups and front levers and reverse levers, which is really cool. And it's very amazing for people to watch you do those type of things. But the main thing was gaining strength and muscle size. So I was like, hmm, I think I need to switch things up. So three months ago, I started doing bodybuilding, which I actually do mostly machines and free weights, but I normally avoid compound exercises such as deadlifts because I have experimented with these compound lifts and I find that they're just not the most optimal for isolating specific muscles that I want to work on and optimize 
muscle growth. And I'm telling you, since I have made the switch, it's been a really amazing experience for me because when I do the bodybuilding, I do train really, really intense and to failure or near to failure because there's actually scientific research showing that you don't necessarily need to go to failure to maximize muscle growth. You can go two to three reps left in the tank and actually get as much muscle growth, unlike what a lot of people believe. If you wanna look at that scientific study, I put a link for it down below. And in these three months, yeah, I've noticed that it's not that taxing on my central nervous system. I don't feel that my nervous system is very, very stimulated. My heart rate doesn't seem very, very high whatsoever, unlike when I was doing calisthenics. I can feel my muscles just being worked on way, way, way more effectively. And it's just optimizing the hypertrophy effect to actually optimize muscle growth because I can just isolate muscles way, way easier. Like I used to do things for biceps with calisthenics. I do things such as pull-ups and all these other different calisthenics exercises that people tell you are amazing for biceps. And during the recovery days, I wouldn't feel that much in my muscles. It felt like I hadn't really worked them that much at all. And I was training to fader and doing many different sets, doing enough frequency, doing enough volume. But with calisthenics, you find it really, really hard, except for certain exercises, you can isolate way more in calisthenics. I will not deny that whatsoever. But most of the exercises you do with calisthenics are compound lifts. You're recruiting many other different muscles when you're trying to target one specific muscle like the biceps with pull-ups. You're also recruiting your forearms, your back, your lats and so on. So for me personally it's just not the best for muscle growth and then when I compare something like pull-ups to bicep curls, yes the bicep curls are very intense on my muscles. They burn like absolute crazy after doing a few reps with a decent weight that really challenges me. But the only muscle that I can feel pretty much working is my biceps and a little bit of my forearms. But when I'm doing the pull-ups, oh man, it's just so, so intense. As you know, if you've done pull-ups, pull-ups are really, really challenging, but it just was never that great for my bicep growth. And it was just challenging me in ways like just making my heart rate go up so high and challenging my central nervous system and the effort to worth, it just wasn't worth it whatsoever. Instead, I could do like three to four sets of bicep curls and it wouldn't be as intense as like one set to failure of pull-ups. So I wouldn't be able to do as much volume and as much frequency with the calisthenics exercises and workouts in comparison to the bodybuilding workouts, which actually I normally train each muscle group around two times a week with bodybuilding, but I found with calisthenics, I could only do it around one time a week because it was so challenging and so demanding on my body that it actually took me a long time to fully recover, even with eating a really clean diet and living a very healthy lifestyle, going to bed around eight to 9 p.m. every single night and doing so many other things. It's just like so taxing on me. And within that year transformation, yes, I did get amazing results but it did break my body down a lot. It wasn't necessarily the healthiest thing for me to do. It was definitely an amazing challenge that I managed to do that, especially because during that transformation, my pregnant girlfriend actually passed away in a tragic accident right in front of me. So yeah, I'm not someone that has a weak mind, I have a warrior mindset and I can push through things and make things happen, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing for me. So the bodybuilding, it gives me more of what I want. I can actually recover from it easier. I can train more frequently. I actually enjoy it way more, personally. Yes, I do love calisthenics as well, but I'm now at a point where I have no desire to do calisthenics in any way, shape or form. There's nothing that is gonna give me that the bodybuilding is not giving me. At least for where I'm at now, I don't believe that in any way, shape or form. And for me, when I got into calisthenics, I just felt naturally drawn to start working out at home. So I started doing things like sit-ups and pull-ups and chin-ups and so on. So it's suitable for me at that time. And that's the brilliant thing with calisthenics. I'm not gonna knock it. There are some people that do manage to get very, very big with calisthenics, but the majority of them are quite slim. They do have a lot of strength. And in many ways, a lot of high level calisthenics athletes are actually way stronger than bodybuilders. I will not deny that whatsoever. And you don't require a gym whatsoever. So you have no excuse to not do it. But for me personally, I also enjoy 
going to the gym and being around other people that are working out. It's another place for me to go because a lot of time I'm indoors working on my YouTube channel, my other businesses and various other things to do. So it's somewhere social for me to go because I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't party. I don't do a lot of other things that other people do in the Western world and the Western society. And it's just so nice for me to go out and meet other people that are into fitness as well. And it's just a really, really amazing experience that I never got with calisthenics. Because yes, sometimes I did work out at places where you could do calisthenics, but pretty much everyone else would be doing bodybuilding or cardio. So I wouldn't really meet many other like-minded people that are doing the same thing. And you know what is amazing? Like I said, I went down to 60 kilos due to the vegan diet messing me up big time. But since I got into the bodybuilding, which I've been doing for three months, I gained back all the muscle that I lost and actually gained more muscle than I had at my heaviest weight on my calisthenics journey. I'm now at the heaviest weight that I've ever been at in my life. And I'm definitely not fat at all. Still got a low body fat percentage. And I feel stronger than ever. I feel better than ever with this type of training. And it's just working wonders for me in any way, shape or form. If you want to be notified of when I'm making a video showing a comparison of my body before and after with this bulk that I'm on, which means I'm eating a diet that is giving me way more calories than I burn every single day, which helps to optimize muscle growth. If you didn't know that, because not everyone's gonna know it's watching this video, is yeah, it's just working wonders, the bodybuilding, with the calorie surplus and it's just helping me go more towards the goals that I found way harder to obtain with calisthenics. One thing I also love with the bodybuilding is I get to train more frequently as I said and I actually prefer training almost every single day. Unlike with calisthenics, with the training that was so hard on my body I found that I could only train every other day. So I was normally only training three to four times a week which now for me the majority of the time I'm training six to seven days a week, which obviously when you can train more frequently like that, it's gonna result in more muscle growth. Because for example, if you only train one muscle group once a week, that's only four times within a month. But if you're doing it two times a week, that's eight times within a month. And then you work that over a year period, that's a lot more frequency and volume that you're doing. And something I'd add on to like the cardio thing is with growing my legs with calisthenics, it was one of the hardest things to do. I didn't actually get that muscle growth optimized with calisthenics in my legs whatsoever, no matter how hard I was trying. Because I found once I started doing leg training calisthenics, certain exercises I was doing were working very effective on my calves and my glutes and all of my other leg muscles. But within a short period of time, I would get way, way stronger in my legs. And then I'd find most of the calisthenics exercises just weren't that effective for giving me the most muscle growth with my legs because it just wasn't hurting my muscles that much. If I tried doing things such as like one-legged calf raises, I could do like 30 to 40 reps and it would just feel like a cardio workout, even if it was with a medium or slow momentum. And it just was ridiculous. And then I would try things such as like jumping squats and all of these harder things. But again, I just found even with the harder things, it was just getting my heart rate up more, getting me sweating more, getting my heart rate up more and burning more calories. And for me, it's best to do a type of training routine that is burning the least calories and giving me the most muscle growth when I'm on my recovery days after a hard training session, which the bodybuilding does that. The bodybuilding, I trained for, for longer than I did with calisthenics workouts, yet I definitely burn way less calories, which makes it easier for me to be in a bigger calorie surplus, and then I get more muscle growth. So that's it for this video. If you want me to make any videos showing what I'm eating on my bulking diet, let me know down below. If you want me to show my full workouts that I'm doing in the gym, I can also do that if you want me to, or any other videos on bodybuilding or my diet that's helping me gain muscle mass or anything to do with anything that I've talked about in this video together. Let me know down below and I can make those videos for you as soon as possible. So as always, leave your comments and questions down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. So as always, stay fit, stay energetic, and go and get those gains. Peace.